move is say self.tick underscore count plus equals one, which means, you know, a tick happened, a frame went by, and now we've moved. So we'll, we'll keep track of how many times we moved since the last jump. All right, the next thing we need to calculate is something called displacement. And this is going to be how many pixels we're moving up or down uh, this frame. And this will be, you know, what we end up actually moving um, when we change the Y position of the bird. So we're going to say D equals, and in this case, we're going to say self dot vel, which is going to be our velocity multiplied by self dot tick underscore count plus 1.5 times self dot tick underscore count to the exponent two. Now, to any of you physics people, this might look similar to a physics equation, and that's because it is. What this does is tells us based on our current bird's velocity, how much we're moving up or how much we're moving down. Now, self dot tick count is actually going to represent how many, um, what do you call it? Like time, like how many seconds we've been moving for. So that's kind of why we use tick count. So every time that we change our direction or we apply a velocity to the birds, so we either move up or we kind of stop moving up. This tick count is going to be going up, 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 up. And then based on what that tick count is, we'll get, you know, either we're moving up or we've reached the top of our jump and now we're moving down. Um, so what happens essentially, you can think of it as as soon as we jump, we reset tick count to zero. We set the height of our bird to be self dot y and we set our velocity to be negative 10.5. So when tick count equals one, what happens is we say negative 10.5 times one. So we have negative 10.5 on this side. So let's write this down here, negative 10.5. Then we add that to 1.5 times self dot tick count to the exponent two, which ends up just evaluating to one because when tick count is one, well, one to the exponent two is one times 1.5, sorry, which is 1.5. So that means that we're moving a total upwards velocity of negative nine. So on this current frame, we're moving nine pixels upwards. Then the next frame will be moving less pixels upwards. So like seven, then five, then three, so on until eventually we get to zero and then we go down and we start moving positive again. And that results in kind of an arc for our bird as it does its jump. Anyways, I hope that that's kind of as simple as I can explain that. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of fail safe this and make sure that we don't have a velocity moving way too far up or way too far down. And this is where what's called a terminal velocity. So I'm going to say if D is greater than or equal to 16. So if we're moving down more than 16 pixels or equal to 16 pixels, let's just set this to be 16 pi pixels so that we don't stop. Uh, we don't move down too fast. We reach a point where we don't accelerate anymore. So to do this, I'm going to say D equals um, D over the ABS of D times 16. So this essentially means whatever way that we're moving, just um, actually, I don't need to do this ABS. I don't think I think I can just do uh, equals D divided by D times 16, which means I can actually just do 16. So essentially, if we're moving down more than 16, just move down 16. All right. So now we're going to say if that's not happening, let's do another if statement and we'll say if D is less than zero, what we'll do is say D minus equals two. Now, what this is going to do is say, you know, if we're moving upwards, let's just move up a little bit more. Uh, and this just kind of fine tunes our movement a little bit. Uh, you can mess with this number if you want the jump to be higher or lower. But this is what a number I've come up with that kind of makes it jump nicely. All right. So now what we're going to do is actually change our Y position based on this displacement. So I'm going to say self dot Y equals in this case, self dot Y plus D. So we'll just add whatever we calculated here to our current Y position. So that way, you know, we'll move slowly up or slowly down. And now we need to worry about actually tilting the bird. So this is the reason we do this inside of move is because based on if we're moving up or down, that's how we're going to figure out whether we're tilting up or we're tilting down. So I'm going to start by saying if D is less than zero or self dot Y is less than self dot height plus 50. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt the bird upwards. And what I'm checking here is saying if D is less than zero, which means we're moving upwards or self dot Y is less than self dot height plus 50, which essentially means that every time we jump, we keep track of where we jump from. So let's actually do a quick uh, picture here. So let's say we jump from here. We're going to check if we're our bird position is currently above this position. If it is, that means we're still moving upwards. So don't start falling down yet. Even if we're on this downward curve, still make it look like we're kind of upwards a little bit. And then as soon as we get a little bit below this point, 
then we can start tilting the bird downwards. That's kind of what that means, essentially. So uh, we check this. And if this happens, what we say is we say if self dot tilt is less than self dot max rotation, which is that number that we have up here, just making sure we don't tilt the bird, you know, completely backwards or a crazy direction, then we'll say self dot tilt equals self dot max rotation. So rather than like moving it up slowly because the max rotation is only 25, we'll just immediately set the rotation of the bird to be 25 degrees. All right, next. Um, so if that's not true, if we're not moving upwards and we don't want to uh, tilt the bird upwards, let's tilt the bird downwards. Now this is a little bit different, but it's not that much different. We'll say if self dot tilt is greater than negative 90, what we'll do is say self dot tilt minus equals self dot rotation velocity, which is just how much we're going to be rotating the bird downwards. Now what this allows us to do is rotate the flappy bird completely 90 degrees. So as it starts falling downwards faster and faster, it looks like it's kind of nose diving to the ground. So that's why we don't use the max rotation because when we go up, we don't want to tilt completely up. We just want to tilt slightly. When we go down, we want to tilt all the way down to 90 degrees, which is what we do here. All right. So now that we've done that, we've actually finished the move method, the jump method and the init. And the last one to do here is draw. Well, actually, I lied. There's one more, but it's not that big. So anyways, we're going to say define uh, self or what am I saying? Define draw self and win and win is simply going to represent the window that we're drawing the bird onto. Now this one's a little bit confusing as well. I apologize, but we need to get through it. So to animate our bird, we need to keep track of how many ticks we've shown a current image for. And when I say tick, I just mean how many times has that while loop or our main game loop run uh, and how many times have we already shown one image? So I'm going to keep track of that with self image count. Now, what I'm going to do is create a few if statements, and this is probably not an efficient way to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to say if self.img underscore count is less than self.animation time, then what I'm going to do is say self.img equals self.img's zero. Again, I repeat, this is not the most efficient way to do this, but it's the way that I've come up with. All right, so now what I'm going to do is say elif self.image count less than self.animation time multiplied by not not five by two, then I'm going to say self dot IMG equals self dot IMGs one. Now we're going to do the same thing. So I guess I should probably just copy this. And can you guess what we're going to change this to? We're going to change this to a three. We're going to change this to a two. We're going to add, I guess, two more elifs. So we're going to do one more here where I change this to be a four and I change this to be a one like this. And then what I'm going to do is do one more elif. And this one is now going to say four, uh, sorry, four plus one. And instead of having a less than, we're going to have two equal signs. And then we're going to change this image to be zero. We're also going to reset the image count. So we're going to say image count equals zero. All right. So let's kind of go through what I actually just did here. So what I'm doing is I'm checking uh, what image we should show based on the current image count. So if the image count is less than five, which is our self dot animation time, then what we're going to do is we're going to display the first flappy bird image. Now, if we get to a point where the animation count is larger than this, we're going to check the next elif statement, which says if the animation time or the, I guess the self dot image count is less than 10, we're going to show the second flappy bird image, which is this. So we're going to go from this to this one where the bird, the wings are now level. All right. So next we're going to say, okay, if we surpass that, then we're going to check if we're less than 15. If we're less than 15, we're going to show the last image. Then we're going to show the first image again, and we're going to show the, um, what am I saying? We're going to show the second image again. Then we're going to show the first image again and reset the image count. So this way we get the wings flapping up and then flapping down. Cause if we just reset after the last image here, then what we would end up having is the bird flaps up and then it instantly goes back to its starting position and it kind of looks like it skips a frame. All right. Now the last thing to do here is just check one last condition. So the thing is when our bird is tilted almost 90 degrees, so going downwards, we actually don't want it to be flapping its wings and changing the image. So what we're going to do is just do a quick check here and say if self dot tilt is less than uh, or equal to negative 80, what we're going to do is say self dot IMG equals self dot IMG is one, which just means we're going to go to the image where its wings are kind of level. And then what we're going to do is just display that image instead so that it looks like it's just nose diving down. It's not like flapping its wings going downwards because that doesn't really make any sense. And it kind of looks kind of weird. 
So then after that, I'm going to say self.img count equals self.animation time multiplied by two. So this way, when we jump back up, it doesn't kind of like skip a frame. It starts at, you know, what it should be to show this image, which is an animation count of 10. All right. Anyways, um, hopefully you guys understood how to do that. Now, the last thing to actually draw this image is we need to rotate it um, around the center uh, based on its current tilt. So all these birds, and we've already modified this, we, it has a tilt. So how do we actually um, tilt the image that we have? Because the image we have, if I can find it from the desktop, um, they're all level, right? Like they're all level with the screen. So how do I make it go up and go down? Well, this is a kind of complicated, but I've written uh, or wrote, I guess, a uh, function that does this for us. Now, I want to clarify, I actually found this on Stack Overflow. Unfortunately, I can't remember where I found it, but I'm just going to type it out and kind of copy it uh, to show you this is what how you actually rotate an image around its center in Pygame. So I'm going to say rotated image equals pygame.transform.rotate like that if I could spell that correctly and then I'm going to take an image and an angle now the image I'm going to do is self dot I am I guess it's just self dot image because that's what we're keeping track of here and then the angle is going to be self dot tilt now what this will do is rotate the image for us um, but we need to kind of move it so it's actually in the center because if we do this it rotates the image around the top left hand corner and it just kind of makes our bird look kind of weird so to fix this we're going to say new underscore rectangle equals in this case rotated image dot get underscore rect and we're going to say center equals image dot get rect now image is actually going to be self dot image my apologies and when we do get rect we're going to do this and we're going to say top underscore left or not top underscore left just top left equals top left and then we're going to say dot center uh, if I could find this here. All right. So that should be about right. So actually, my apologies here. We don't need to type top left again. What we do here is actually define the top left of our image, which is going to be self dot X self dot Y. And then we put this dot center. Now, again, I honestly don't really know how this works. I just copied it from Stack Overflow, but I do know that it rotates the image around the center, which is what we need to do. I'll see if I can find that link and put it in the description. Anyways, now since in our draw method, we have the window that we're going to be drawing this onto, I'm going to say wind.blit, and then I'm going to blit the rotated image um, around a, a certain position. So I'm going to say rotated image, and then I'm going to put it on new rect dot top left. Now, I know this is kind of weird, and you probably haven't seen this in Pygame, but this is just how we rotate the image. Again, I don't want to go through all of that. All right, the last method we need is something called get underscore mask. And this is what we're going to use when we get collision for or do collision for our objects. This one's pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is if I can actually find it because I'm just looking at my other screen here is we're going to return a value that is pygame dot mask dot from underscore image or not image surface. And then the surface is going to be self dot IMG. We'll talk about masks later, but we just need to implement that. All right, so I was going to program the rest of the classes first, but I figured since we just did all this work on this bird class, let's actually just start getting into drawing some of this stuff here so we can see how this bird class actually works while it's still fresh in our minds. So what I'm going to do is start by creating a function called main. Uh, this main function is going to run the main loop of our game. I'm also going to create another function called draw underscore window. And this is what's going to, well, draw the window for our game. So it's going to take a bird and actually we'll do window first. It's going to take window and bird. Now what I'm going to do in here is just really quickly draw the background image and then draw the bird on top of it just so we can see how the bird actually works when it's moving. So what I'm going to say is do win dot blit. And if you don't know what blit does, it just means draw. So it's like draw whatever you put in here on the window. So in this case, I'm going to put our background image, which is BG underscore image comma. And then I'm just going to put zero zero to draw it zero zero on a screen. So let's do that. Uh, so this is the top left position of the image where you're drawing it anyways. OK, now I'm going to say pygame game dot display dot update which simply updates the display and kind of refreshes it. And then I'm going to draw the bird. So I'm going to say win, no, not win doublet. We already have a method for this. It's called bird.draw. And we'll pass it that window. And now when we do that, we will call this draw method. It'll handle all the animation, all the tilting for us, and draw the bird. 
Okay, so now inside of our main loop here, let's create a bird object. Let's just call it bird uh, for simplicity here. And we'll say bird, bird. We'll give it a starting position of, I don't know, 200, 200, just so that we can see it and we'll update this later. Now, what I'm going to do really basically in here is create a while loop and just set up the main game loop for our pie game uh, window. So in here, I'm going to create another uh, variable called run equals true. I'm going to say, well, run, and then that way we can make run equal false later and end the game if we need to. Now I'm going to set up the basic pie game of event loop, which is for event uh, in pie game dot event dot get. And it's just going to keep track of whenever something happens, like whenever the user clicks the mouse or something, uh, we'll run this for for loop loop through all the events and then we can do something with that. So the event we want to check for here is if event dot type equals equals pie game dot quit in all capitals. Uh, then what we're going to do is pygame.quit. Now what this does is quits pygame. Um, so if we click on the red X in the top right hand corner of our pygame window, we're going to quit. Now, actually, I'm just going to modify this a little bit to make this run equals false. And I'm just going to quit outside the loop. So, you know, if we ever exit this loop, we quit pygame. And then consequently, we can actually quit the program as well. All right, so let me just call main here and inside this while loop, let's add one more line, which calls our draw window function. And now we'll pass that window as well as bird. And if we call this, we should be able to see our bird moving or actually we'll see our bird and then we'll be able to see it moving later. So let's look at this now. If I run and hit uh, control B in subline text, what is the issue? Video system not initialized. Oh, I need to create a pie game window. My bad. So let's do win equals pie game dot. Uh, what do you call it? Dot display dot set underscore mode. And then for the coordinates, we're going to go win underscore width win underscore height. My apologies about that. All right. So now that we do that, you can see we have this flappy vert and he is flapping his wings. Now this image is a little bit short for our screen, which I mean, guess that means we need to make the width a little bit shorter. So let's make this width uh, 500 and see if that makes it a little bit better. And there we go. So we have this bird, he's flapping his wings, but obviously he's not moving yet. So if we want to move him, what we need to do is we need to call move on our bird. So what I'm going to say is bird dot move. So this is what we're going to call every frame. So essentially every time our while loop ticks, our bird's going to move. So let's run this and see how it looks now. And you can see our bird just falls down um, out of nowhere almost immediately, and he falls very quickly. So how can we fix this? Well, we need to implement something called a clock so that we can actually set the frame rate or like the tick rate. So how fast this while loops running uh, to be at a consistent rate. So it's not going to depend on how fast your computer is, how fast it runs. We're actually going to set it. So I'm going to make a clock object. This is cl clock equals pie game dot time dot clock. And now what I'm going to do is every time I run this while loop, I'm going to call clock dot tick 30, which stands for we're going to do at most 30 ticks every second. So now if I run this and we do control B, you can see our bird falls a much slower and he looks a lot better. And you can even notice that he actually tilts down as he starts falling downwards. So we know that we've done everything correctly for our bird class. So anyways, we'll leave this in here for now. Um, I'm just going to comment out bird.move, and that's all we need to do to test our bird. So next, let's start coding our pipe class. 